I have been using this mob farm so much since the last episode and it has been doing incredibly well. I did convert it into more of a manual farm as you can see here. Uh, and it was actually quite simple to do that, especially with being able to turn the farm on and off. I've also been doing a lot of cave lighting to help improve the rates of this farm. And I've gotten it to a point now where it is mostly just small little pockets of caves here and there that I still need to light up, which is going to be really annoying to light those up and find out where all of those are but anyway today if we look at the episode board we are going to be building up a bee farm and a tree farm and yes i do know those rhyme and no that was not intentional but as for the bee farm for some reason all of the bees that are in this main corridor here they keep pathfinding outside of the base and I'm not entirely sure why that is happening. And I don't think there are currently any bees in any of these hives, unfortunately. Uh, they have everything they need down here. They have their beehives and all of the flowers they could possibly want. So I guess they just think there's something better out there for them, even though there isn't. So most of the bees that end up trying to leave either end up getting lost in the caves in here, trying to find an exit, or the ones that do actually make it out really just end up sticking around on top of the mountain here, not really doing anything. So the only solution that I can think of is to just build an enclosed bee farm, which is what we're going to be doing today. And we are going to be building that over here in this area because I think we're ready to expand over here now and I've been wanting to expand over here for a while so I'm actually super excited about building stuff up over here which the tree farm is also going to be built up over here as well but anyway I'm going to get everything gathered up that we're going to need for this bee farm and then we can get started on building it up so I have gathered up everything we need for the bee farm and hopefully this should be it. Uh, I will probably get some more flowers because uh, I do kind of want this to look nice. And I am thinking of putting it in this corner right here. I think this will be the perfect spot for it. And I do want it to be kind of open air, sort of. Uh, so I want it to take up quite a large area here and let the bees kind of roam around in this farm. That way they're not just like cramped up in one little area like you kind of see with some of the other bee farm designs. So to start this off, I am probably going to have to clear out a little area here to make sure that this is big enough for everything we want to do. Okay, so back here we are going to have an automatic collection system for all of the honey uh, this will be collecting the honey bottles and then i'll have a few other uh bee nests kind of scattered around here that i will use to collect the honeycomb if i need it but for this we are going to start off with the dispensers and i'm going to have everything on this level here so we're going to need all of these dispensers facing downwards and then we'll have some hoppers going over here and then I'll do another barrel for some overflow. And I will also probably hook up an automatic shutoff system to this barrel as well. And then on top of these hoppers is going to go our beehives. And then the bees will go into the beehives here. They will put the pollen in there and make some honey. And then once these beehives fill up, they will get the honey extracted from them using the dispensers here. And then the honey bottles will end up in this barrel right here. So now it's time for the redstone. And for this, we are going to have some blocks on the backs of these uh, beehives. And then we are going to take some slabs like this. And before we put on the top row, I'm going to put in the redstone that goes down here, which is just going to be a bunch of comparators right there and then a bunch of redstone here. And then up here, we are going to have some more half slabs going like this. 
And then we're just going to put in a bunch of redstone here again. And that is it for the redstone. We just need to fill up these dispensers with bottles and then we should be good to put the bees in here. But of course, before we put the bees in this farm, we need to actually seal it off and make it look really nice. So with that, we are going to need some glass and some building blocks. So I think this is looking pretty good and pretty finished. I do still need to let this grass grow, uh, but all of the flowers are in place. Uh, I do wanna get a few more of these double tall flowers. I only have the rose bushes right now, so I'll have to bone meal some of the other ones. But I think this is good and we can start putting in the bees, which I am going to put these uh, bee nests over here. And there should be at least two bees. Yes, there are. And I am going to grab these and start breeding them up because we are going to need a ton of bees in here. And since there is no way for them to escape, they should all stay in here. But uh, this farm should be pretty much finished. I do still need to put the glass bottles in the dispensers here. Uh, but other than that, we just need to breed up these bees, get their numbers up, and we should be good to go. So I've been doing a lot of work in the bee farm here, as you can see, and all of these bees have been bred up now, and there are an absolute ton of them here, and this farm has been running pretty well. Uh, we've got a decent amount of honey bottles, and I've already crafted up some of them into honey blocks, so we've got quite a few of those as well. I've also been doing a lot of trading with the villagers to get all of these glass bottles because the librarian villagers do give us glass, so that has been very helpful with trying to get those. Anyway, it is time to start working on the tree farm, and for that, we need to go where we're going to be building it up, which is going to be up over there. But this is where the tree farm is going to go. Uh, it does appear there is a slime chunk here, but this should be fine for a tree farm. Uh, it should be able to handle all of the spruce trees, the big ones, but there are still a few things that I want to clear out regardless, and I do want to push that wall back a little bit as well. Uh, so I think we can probably get started on clearing some of that stuff out and getting this uh, tree farm started. All right, so I have cleared out this area a little bit and it is a little bit easier to see the area we have to work with now. And so now all we have to do is just plan everything out where all of the different sections of the tree farm are going to go. So for the tall spruce trees, I think we should obviously go for the tallest point in this building, which I believe is going to be right here. So this is where I'm planning on putting the spruce trees. Uh, there should be enough of a gap here for these to grow without any problem. And in between all of the farms or all of the different plots for the farms, I think I'm going to have some grass patches. Uh, I do know with the spruce here, these are probably going to end up turning into podzel unfortunately. So for the dark oak, I think I'm going to start it over here. Okay, so now we have three spots here for the dark oak, and we can move on to the oak and birch area, which I am probably going to put over here. And for this one, I do kind of want to bring it quite a ways away from the spruce trees here. And for this one, we are of course going to do it in little strips like this. And then finally for the mangrove trees, I am probably gonna put them in this area and there is going to be quite a large space for them. So I may only be able to fit in about two or three areas for them to grow in. And that should be good for the mangrove trees. Uh, I could probably add in two more over here uh, and cover up this cave area a little bit as well. But this is the basic idea for the tree farm. It is pretty simple. It is not automated in any way at all. It is still very manual and I wanted it to be that way because there are certain things that I 
don't really want to be fully automated and wood collection is one of those. So this will suffice for right now. So I think I'm going to add some finishing touches to this tree farm, get it finished up a little bit more. Uh, I also want to add some water elevators that will take you up to the top there so that you can kind of like drop down on top of these taller spruce trees here uh, and take them out a little bit easier. Yeah, this tree farm is pretty much almost done. So I finished up this tree farm and I think it is looking pretty good. Uh, I did plant in some trees here and most of them grew up. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why these birch trees didn't grow. Uh, it might be because they're too close to the oak trees. I'm not sure about that. It could also be because there's not enough height with this. And then there's also one of these spruce trees that didn't grow. And I'm assuming it's because this one decided it wanted to have a lot of leaves for some reason, uh, but it could be because it's too close to that. I'm not sure. But all of the mangrove trees and dark oak trees grew in just fine. And if we want to chop these guys down, we just got to go up this elevator here and then I can drop down on top of this spruce tree and then break down the trunk here. And it is that simple. And we can do that same thing with the dark oak trees as well. And for the mangrove trees, I have this one over here that will get us on top of this side here. And then we can drop down on the mangrove trees like this. But I will get around to harvesting all of these trees later. Right now though, I first want to show you guys how to get up here. So I built this little pathway here, which connects up to this area. And there's just this little rope bridge here that kind of goes across this. I don't even know what to call this. I guess it's a ravine. But to finish off this episode, I really want to get this area here built up a little bit more and looking a little bit nicer and a little more uniform with the rest of the base. But I do need to repair this pickaxe because it is almost broken, so I will have to do a little bit of villager trading. But I'm not going to bore you guys with that, so let's get started with fixing that area up. So that took a lot longer than I was expecting it to, but I have to say, I think this place is looking really good right now. Uh, obviously it's still really empty, we do need to fill it out with a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to build here yet, but I do want to fill it out more and at least fill it up with a bunch of nature stuff like we have in the rest of the base. And then we have this bee farm over here that is looking absolutely amazing. But then if we come down here, I cleared out this whole area as well. And we have the bridge over to our tree farm here. And then you can also see up there a little bit as well. And then there's this cave peeking out right here. I do want to keep this pillar here because I want to keep some natural parts of this area. Uh, I did try to keep the natural form more or less i did obviously flatten it out a lot it was not this flat of course but i did try to preserve the natural form of things as much as possible as for this area up here with this bridge uh, I'm pretty happy with how this bridge turned out. I think it looks pretty good, but unfortunately that is going to be it for this episode because I am completely out of time here and I really need to get this episode out to you guys. So if you did enjoy it, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. That would help me out a lot and I would greatly appreciate it. And if you have any suggestions for this series or you just want to say hello, then please make sure to leave a comment down in the comment section. But that's going to be it for this one, so I'll see you guys next time.